The fight for Cuba lives on in the Bay Area for a ninth day in a row. Demonstrators have been out there for hours tonight. It's all in support of Cubans fighting against the Cu communist regime. It's a sentiment shared by many people here in Florida who fled from Cuba for a better life. 10 Tampa Bay's Angelina Salcido spoke to one local family that says they fight so Cubans on the island have the chance to survive. Carolina, this is week two of demonstrations. You can hear them chanting behind me right now. There is a family that has been coming out day by day. They wave the American flag along with the Cuban flag. The reason why they do that is because the American flag symbolizes them being free from the regime. Aquí salgo a protestar para apoyar a, a mi pueblo. Sitting in his restaurant, overcome with emotion, Gustavo Orama thinks about the island he called home. It's the second week he and his family protest in solidarity with Cuba. Como todos los millones de cubanos que han salido de Cuba, llegué aquí por la dictadura que existe en Cuba. He risked his life and came by boat to escape Cuba's communist government in 1980. A few years later, his family opened El Gallo de Oro in West Tampa and pursued the American dream. Para mí esta es mi vida. Esto es ah, pasión. It's all of our life. Julissa helps run it now. She was born here, but still fights for her dad. That's the reason why I go out there because you know, I've grown up listening to the stories. They asked for a humanitarian intervention, one that could save hundreds of Cubans from dying. Esto no es cuestión de política. Esto es una cuestión de que hay un genocidio. Están matando la gente en Cuba. Y hay que parar eso. That's why they don't stop coming out. But the fight to save lives isn't easy. They worry speaking out here at home could get their family killed. There's a lot of hateful people in the world. <sighs> and I just get worried a little bit for our safety, but if they're willing to risk their life, then I am too. Now you can tell that this is an emotional time for them. They tell me that this has been an emotional roller coaster. Their fight for Cuba is not over. Their next step is for them to go to Washington, D.C. and stand with thousands of Cubans from across the country that will be in front of the White House this weekend. And the Cuban government has been trying to cut off the country's communication with the rest of the world since these protests began. And it seems to be making it harder for organizations like Proyecto Inventario to compile documentation from the outcry of Cubans. Here's a deeper dive into how their data has seemingly declined over the last week. I just want to take a look at this map right here, showing the social posts they've been compiling across the country. This is from July 11th. There were more than 90 posts uploaded, a lot of them from right there in Havana. As you can see, if we go to the next day, posts dropping off. Just one day later, there were only 14. That's the day the Cuban government reportedly restricted access to social media sites. We go to the 13th now, and look at that, barely any on the map. The compiled post dwindled down to six. And then there were none until two days ago. We're just a little bit in Havana, Santa Clara. That's about it. Even then, only three had popped up.